Howdy folks, Professor Honky Tonk here. In today's lesson, we're going to get into some fundamentals uh, of the right hand on the pedal steel guitar. Now, the right hand is the most important part of tone production on the pedal steel guitar. One thing that you might find confusing at first is if you look at different steel players, you're going to see some different approaches to the right hand. Not everybody does it exactly the same. In this video, I'm going to show you some of what I do with my right hand. I'm not saying that my approach to the right hand is perfect by any means, uh, but it works pretty well for me. So I'm going to show you some things I do. Uh, and we'll learn a couple exercises and get started playing a little bit. So let's jump in. All right, so let's start with finding our right hand position. If you start with kind of a hang 10, like a surfer dude kind of sign, and then turn the hand over, we get pretty close to the technique that I use. Now, I think about that pinky sticking out away from my body. I think about the thumb facing towards the key head or towards my left hand, okay? And then from there, when I'm not playing, I can set that pinky down to block the strings or stop them from ringing. We're gonna talk about that later, okay? So to start with, I want you to find the sixth string from the top. One, two, three, four, five, sixth. The sixth string. And we're just gonna play some strokes lightly with the thumb. I'm actually, while I do this, my pinky is touching that top string lightly to kind of anchor my hand. So to play some strokes with the thumb pick, I'm gonna start by, uh, let's see if you look, only about a millimeter of the pick is gonna be sticking down past the string. That's about where I'm gonna want my point of contact to be. So I'm gonna start right back from there and then push the thumb forward. Okay, so thumb strokes, basically just push forward with the thumb and then bring it right back. Practice a few thumb strokes on your own. Now we're gonna use the first finger or index finger over string five. So I'm going to pick with the side of the tip of the pick. So not with like the center of the tip of the pick because that would turn my hand flat like this. We don't want the top of our hand flat. We want to be turned more at about a 45 degree angle. So using just the side of the tip of the pick, move your finger towards you until you've plucked and then bring it right back. Now let's do some with the second finger on the fourth string, same thing. Side of the tip of the pick, pull towards yourself using your finger and then go right back to where you were. So don't move the whole hand, just the tip of, of the finger. Okay, so let's do a little exercise with this. Let's do four thumb strokes, four of finger one, four of finger two, and then four of finger one. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Let's try it again. One, two, ready, go. All right, so now we're going to take the same idea of picking individual strings, but we're going to start using our pedals and knee levers to set up a chord progression. So in this case, we're going to use that same grip on strings four, five, and six, but instead of picking each four times, we're going to pick each twice. So we're going to start using no pedals or knee levers and just go uh, straight up the thumb, twice, pointer, twice, middle finger, twice, pointer, twice. That's our one chord, E major. To get to the four chord, we're going to put the A and B pedals down and then do the same thing. Two on the thumb, two on one, two on two, two on one. And then we're gonna go to the five chord. Again, not using the bar at all, just using open strings. So you're gonna lower your E a half step most uh, guitars have a lever that does that. 
So you're gonna use your E lever that lowers uh, lo your lever that lowers the E down a half step. A lot of the time that's labeled as the D lever in notation, as uh, it is on my notation there. And we're so we're gonna use the B pedal, not using the A pedal. So when you use just one pedal at a time, kind of rock your foot towards that B pedal. Okay, just use your big toe if you're playing on an Emmons setup. If you play day setup, they're reversed, so you'd be using, like, think about tilting over towards your pinky toe and lower the E and then go back to the one chord. I uh, put together a little backing track for this that you can practice with. In fact, a lot of the exercises uh, in my course are going to have a backing track for you to jam to. So let's check out how this is going to go. One, two, a one, two, ready, go. For exercise 1B, we're going to do the same sort of thing except pick each note only once. We're going to use the same backing track. So we're going to go like thumb one, two, one, thumb one, two, one. Then put down your A and B pedal, do the same thing. Then your B pedal plus lower your E to get your five chord, so on. Let's give it a shot. One, two, a one, two, ready. For exercise 1C, we're going to practice picking the entire chord. So strings 4, 5, and 6 together with the thumb and 1 and 2. And we're going to go half note, half note, quarter, 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 quarter. Remember, half note's two beats, quarter's one beat. So we're going to go half, half, quarter, 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 half, half, so on. Through the same chord progression using the same backing track. Let's check it out. One, two. A one, two, ready, go. Now we're going to start using some blocking. Blocking is where we use the bottom edge of the hand, or the palm, to stop the strings from vibrating, which is a very important part of pedal steel playing. Otherwise, everything would be real smeary all the time. We'd also have that undesirable sound all the time of picking on a vibrating string. You could hear that at the beginning when I wasn't blocking on these exercises, that you hear that little bit of uh, metallic rasp when you pick on a vibrating string. So what we're going to do is take the same exercise and incorporate some blocking. So we're going to pick a half note, pick, block, and then we're going to go pick, block, pick, block. So it's going to be half note, half rest, quarter, quarter rest, quarter, quarter rest. Uh, try to keep your hand low, keep your picks low to the strings, and don't be lifting back and forth a whole lot. Try to keep everything real low to the strings and keep your motion minimal. Try to let the strings long, ring for the full value of a half note or a quarter note before you uh, cut the sound off with your palm. Let's check it out. One, two, a one, two, ready, go. Next, we're going to work on blocking individual notes. So we're going to play the thumb, block, one, block, two, block, one, block, over the same chord progression and the same pattern. It's going to be 
quarter, block, quarter, block, quarter, block, quarter, block, so on. You might find that when you pick with different fingers, there are going to be different parts of the hand that are going to be easiest to use to block. Sometimes using the bottom edge of the hand, this big squishy part right here. Sometimes using the pinky, sometimes using the ring finger. So thinking about, you know, that uh, surfer dude, uh, hang 10 thing, using that pinky, but also the ring finger can also be used to block. Now, there are some folks who block with their picks. They'll strike the note and then set the pick on the string. I'm not a big fan of that personally. Some people use it to great you know, success. I prefer the more old school palm blocking uh, that was used by masters like Buddy Emmons, Jimmy Day, Jerry Bird, Randy uh, Reinhardt, etc. So let's check this exercise out. This might take a little while longer with the coordination. Try to, again, keep your picks low to the strings. And when you muffle or when you block, try to go for instant cutoff of the sound without being real noisy about it. Let's give it a try. One, two, a one, two, ready, go. <laughs> That does it for this first lesson. Many more to come. So just to review, learning how to use that right hand, keeping the fingers low, doing some blocking. The right hand is something we can continue to improve upon our entire lives. Uh, thinking of my you know, favorite steel players like Buddy Emmons and Randy Reinhardt, uh, all throughout their careers, they kept working on the basics, working on growing as players, trying to get that beautiful tone, how to get that, you know, that ice out of the instrument. A lot of it has to do with the right hand. So hopefully this gets you off to a good start. I have more lessons that will be coming soon. So be sure to subscribe to Professor Honky Tonk on YouTube. Also check out ProfessorHonkyTonk.com. I think the price of some of these steel courses that are coming out these days is absolutely kind of absurd. So I'm not charging anything for mine. But if you want to support, buy me a cup of coffee, help me pay for the cost of web hosting, uh, equipment, and so on, go to ProfessorHonkyTonk.com and there'll be a, a tab where you can uh, support and uh, you know throw a few bucks my way if you are so inclined. Also, be sure to check out LoneStarReserveRecords.com, which is a small record label that I own and operate. Uh, for some uh, cool, fun stuff that's going to be uh, coming up there. I already have a couple albums for sale and more cool stuff on the way. So this is Professor Honky Tonk signing off. Wishing you happy practicing.